Where we're going to be reading in the, in the Thomas Taylor. Well, if we read the post primal, it will be 5 2. Okay. Which is page 363. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, it's 388 in the Thomas Taylor. Is it really? On the generation and the order of things after the 363 in my text. Oh, no, this is a. Uh, I downloaded this up. Who's that called? Okay. Duh. 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 Okay, um, last time we were playing with this great idea of nothing. <coughs> we played with this quote on page 107, everything can come from it precisely because there is no thing in it. Remember that great statement, page 107? In order that being be, the one must not, must be not being, but beings begetter. Right. Therefore, it cannot, it cannot be produced by anything or any being, and therefore it has to be something that is not being or has no being, the one. Now look, at this point, we were exploring this moment of what it's like when the one overflows and returns, it's a procession, returns at this moment, that's the birth of intelligence. That's the way we were exploring it. Now in post-primals, he moves from post-primals to the three primal hypostases, and we can continue this exploration if we take a look at four, five, six, seven. Um, what are we doing it for? We want to see <coughs> further, we want to continue the exploration of the relationship between the one and the intelligence. And we know very well that when he works, he's always dealing with these three, but we're interested in this at this point, because once intelligence is born, remember, then in inte intelligence goes through the similar process, and that similar pro process produces not intelligence, but soul. So he has all three in post-primals, but now we want to focus more and get more information on the nature of the intelligence. Now look, he, the man writes beautifully. So if we just take a look at the first paragraph in 4, 5, 6, and 7, notice the fun we can have. Four. Greatness of the intelligence may also be seen in this. We marvel at the magnitude and beauty of the sense world, the eternal regularity of its movement, the divinities, visible and invisible, that it contains. Its diamonds, animals, plants, let us then rise to the model, to the higher reality from which the world derives, and let us there contemplate the whole array of intelligibles that possess eternally an inalienable intelligence in life. Five. Same first part, first part. The intelligence, manifold and divine, is in the soul, since the soul is joined to it, provided the soul does not uh, will to overstep its bounds and cede from it. So close to the intelligence that it is almost one with it. That's five. So in five, he's pushing the relationship between these two because they're so close to one another it's as if we're looking at two bodies. They're so close to one another that they are nearly one with it. 
So therefore, when we're talking about soul in Plotinus, it has this quality. Notice how he jumps then and continues to six. Hey, some questions remain. How does the intelligence see? What does it see? How does it exist and issue from the one in order to see? <clears throat> Seven. We call the intelligence image of the one. And, uh, you know what? This we must explain. Right? This is an image of this. <coughs> Huh. So you look over the questions again, you look at each one, so you say to yourself, which one serves us best to explore most clearly the dynamics of this curious and most interesting of all issues? Now remember, we're pushing on two levels. The other level we're pushing it on This person is able to grasp the one. This person is able to grasp the intelligence or the most brilliant light of being. That's another way of talking about the intelligence. This person has this state. This person has been able to experience that state. So look here. If the nature of... Now, remember, now we're talking about... My figure is not as perfect as it should be. Um... So let me do what I want here. The one overflows and returns. At that moment, the returning, that's the birth of intelligence. That means it's at that moment returning. That's a very interesting state. He's got it. This person has grasped the nature of the one itself. Not this. Different. So, if this person is seeing the most brilliant light of being, what is it like? Notice, we're moving from what could be called an experience to metaphysics. That's the transition Plotinus makes. From it. So, what's your call? Where would you go? Four, five, six, or seven? Or three, if you like. But I, I chose those. Let's start with the young one. See, because three deals primarily with soul. So take what? what Let's start with the young one, four. <coughs> Move on if we have. You just go sequence. Yeah, that's okay. natural. One way, okay? Thank you, Martin, for suggesting which one? Four. Four. Sequence. Seven. I go back. 
I I backwards. She could go backwards. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You like that one too? Yeah. Okay, the reason I'm raising it is that we're not likely to get through four, five, six, and seven in one night. We're slow readers. And that's why I raised the issue. I don't get it. But, this um, isn't working <clears throat> the same way. So which way would you go? Pardon? Would, now that we've offered, which way would you choose? Or did it? Okay. What's the issue for our presents with us? Okay, take a look. First paragraph. What's the issue we're going to be looking for? Right. He's going to focus on a particular issue. He introduces it. In every section, that's the way he proceeds. What's the issue then? Perceptible universe. In seven, it's the... No, four, we're on four. Oh, we're on four? Okay, just greatness. Just greatness. Just <laughs> oh, I didn't know we agreed. Okay, greatness. Okay. Let us rise to the model to the higher reality from which this world derives, and let us there contemplate the whole array of intelligibles that possesses eternally an inalienable intelligence in life. What are we going to do? Rise to the model. We're going to contemplate, right? Good. Hey. <laughs> Did you find it? In there? In there? It's 363, is it? Is it? <laughs> what? What do you Would you consider intelligibles a noun? And in <clears throat> would you consider intelligibles a noun or a thing, an intelligence a process? No, because that's intelligence what you get after you encounter the intelligible. I know, but I'm just saying they are definitely the intelligibles. You know, are in the metaphysical world without beginning. I sure agree with you there. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I agree with you. Let me get it all right. Yeah. Yeah. So our world, our world. Our world, which then is going to be soul and nature. So the intelligence is the model. Or what's another word for it? Paradigm, right? Also, it's the parent, right? It gives birth to soul. Hope so. So it's yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay. What are we going to do? <coughs> Contemplate the whole array of intelligibles that possesses eternally this intelligence and in life. It's also a ruling. Form. Because over there and presides pure intelligence, mm -hmm. unapproachable wisdom. And above them. Wow. Wow. Kronos. And he's got a beautiful little way of understanding it, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. right. Plenty of news. So, what is this guy experiencing now? Bliss. What's he? He's blissed out. So, would you agree that we're now describing him? 
sense of Since it is in a state of bliss, why should the intelligence seek change? It contains everything, it doesn't aspire to anything, it's perfect, no development, perfect true, perfect throughout that experience. He's talking about the experience. He has the experience. And now he's putting words on this experience, and the words he uses, he builds as, as if you prefer, different colors to paint the picture of metaphysics, or the building blocks for his metaphysics, or the elements he needs to link together to make intelligible this experience. So look at the way he's doing it. See? He's in it. All right, state of bliss. <clears throat> When he's in it, he can't aspire to anything. It's perfect. In that experience, no sense of development. It's perfect throughout. Not thought. So this is not a thought. This is an experience. What is it? It's a possession. He possesses. This is possession. Right. He's possessed by it. It's a possession. Its happiness doesn't depend upon anything, anything else, something else. You know what it is? Eternally it's all things in that eternity of which time, which abandons one moment for the next, is only a fleeting image upon the level of the soul. So then, hey, you know what this is? So not fleeting. Uh, the experiences of that which all of that which always is. And when you say that which always is or always has been, that's another word for eternity, strictly speaking. <coughs> so it's eternally all things in that eternity. Right? Now he makes a contrast with soul. So you go over here, the idea of soul, and now you're going to get terms to describe soul. Shift gears. Soul's action is successive, divided by various objects that draw its attention. Now, Socrates, now Horace, always some particular. The intelligence, however, back to intelligence, embraces all, possesses all in unchanging identity. It is alone. Always has the, the character presentness. It's right there, present, eternally present. It's right there. Present before the beholder. Bang! <coughs> no future, no past. That's gone. <coughs> All that things exist in eternal present. That which is eternally is. Since it always is, it's eternally present. All it contains exists in an eternal present because they remain identical with themselves. Contain, you might say, with their present condition singly. You know what? See, another word for intelligence is if, uh, uh, in this encounter, in this encounter, there is a seeing. Right? There's a seeing. This whole thing is dynamic, therefore there is life to it. In that seeing, that's intelligence, right? Um, 
that's what intelligence is. The ability to see whatever you see, that's intelligence. Look, that's intelligence. Pierre? Occasionally. Would you just go back two lines, because I think you, there's two lines that we didn't read. If you think it's important, do you? Yeah. Okay, then you'll tell us why it's important as well, and we benefit two ways. Yeah. Because then No, no, have... no, please go ahead. So, um, it never dies, the intelligence. Please read. Yes, the part you were talking about. Um, the intelligence, however, embraces all, possesses all in an unchanging identity. It is alone. And it always has this character of presentness. Future it has not. No intelligible entity ever passes away. All it contains exists in an oh. eternal present because they remain identical with themselves, contented, you might say, with their present condition. I thought you just said there were two sentences. Did I miss you? Did I miss those two sentences? Oh, I guess it was a long one. No. Oh, did you? It's okay. I just want to make sure that you're contributing something that we overlooked, and I was hoping you would now, out of that reading, pull it out and talk about it. Um, That's not a put-down. Mm -hmm. um, well, um, the, um, if you would ask me, yes, it is true that the sentence I left out, mm -hmm. right, I would say it was contained in the succeeding one, which is why I dropped it, but I think it's worth bringing it up, which is mm -hmm. the intelligence, however, embraces all and possesses all in an unchanging identity. <coughs> it is alone, unchanging identity. Same idea, isn't it? Now, these two together, like, see, the dude is experiencing this. And what he's encountering is that he isn't, what he's encountering is the very <coughs> nature of mind. Mind, I use the word mind. He says, oh my gosh, that's me. That's me. Me in what respect? <coughs> That's the very nature of mine, which is the nature of me. Hey, you know what? This is not some abstract thought. It's dynamic. It's magnificent. It's full of life. So you put these two, that's what, the, together, that's what it is. Hey, you know what? It is. Ah, that's being. It is. Eternally is, right? So these are the three great terms, right? intelligence, life, and being. Together they form a totality of intelligence and the totality of being. Intelligence gives existence to being and thinking it, or I don't know whether thinking would be proper, but See, in this, in this experience, you could say the person is seeing, but not with the eyes. So they, are, they have something like an eye, the intellect is like an eye, intellecting, right, is like seeing the intelligible. <clears throat> it's like the object seen. So that you could say the, the eye of the soul, the intellect or the mind, is able then to be active in the very process of encountering. And these all 
these three, while we are distinguishing them, they're all one. It takes place immediately. See, being, being the object, being, this is being, being, being the object, being the object of the, being, bang. Wow, that's something. Yeah, being, hey, no different than me, mine, oh, my eyes are just operating, oh, oh, wow. Hey, everything's present to it. Hey, bless possessed. Oh, oh. All he says, ain't going through any changes, doesn't have to. Pure beauty. What do you know about that? Oh. Hey, this word is most important. Right, what are the two most important words in philosophy? No, because... Right? No. Without them, we can't do anything. <clears throat> right? How about because? I thought that would... That would maybe... But! <laughs> there must still exist something else that makes the intelligence think and being be. Their cause. Hey, there's a cause to this? There's a cause to it? Yeah. It is true that the intelligence and being exist simultaneously, together, never apart. Hey, they're oneness, not the one. They're oneness. Simultaneously, intelligence and being, thinking the object of thought. Twofold. The intelligence in as much as it has an intellect, and being in so much as the object of noose, right? intellection implies difference as well as identity. Therefore, the primary terms, now we're getting primary terms for our philosophy. Okay, watch them, build them. We've got a whole bunch. Intelligence, being, we already got intelligence, being, Identity. Because if you say they're, they're, there's a oneness to them, they're okay, that's an identity. That's an identity. Right. Uh, we're making a distinction, therefore a difference. Right. If I'm saying that it's got a dynamic, well, that's life. That's a difference between the, the seeing, yeah, ah, See, we're building up a philosophical vocabulary. And we must add, hey, movement or dynamic, and then the dude can stay in it to whatever degree it's also rest. Right, movement is implied in the intellectual activity. Rest, sameness, difference implicit in the distinction between thinker and the thought. So, see, here we have we have five fundamental terms, uh, six fundamental terms. Uh, For Aristotle, he says, ah, there are five. Being, same, difference, motion, rest. See what the different set of terms with Plotinus, so he's going to start building a different system. For this multiplicity of these terms, watch now. What do we got? See what I'm doing? 
I'm counting. Ah, number. Ah, a bunch of them. Quantity. From these terms, as from originating principles, everything else proceeds. So this is his vocabulary, drawn from that experience. Notice. <clears throat> They're putting words on the primary experience and then making judgments about the significance of the distinctions that he's made. Because he really only has two or three. But we could really put in another one but he didn't put in, which he mentions being. But you really only have one experience. But within it you can say, hey, y'all, Dynamic, oh, life, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, intelligence, mind, yeah, yeah, it's mind. Uh, you encountered reality, nothing could be more real, being. So you know what you're doing? You're making distinctions in this experience. That's the building blocks for this whole system. They become principles for generating its whole system. <coughs> And now, all of this, all of this, is in the soul. Has to be, because person who encounters it, discovers it, therefore it has to be in the soul. Nowhere else. <coughs> So, look here, that means that these principles follow from this most magnificent experience. Therefore, we have to be pretty close to that experience since these are the principles for all philosophy for Plotinus. So when you're using these distinctions his way, you're thinking about this experience using the very language that is most meaningful for it. And therefore, hey, you know what? We're pretty close to it, since we can use that language and be akin to that experience. But That's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, we're not far. We're not far. Just a step. He said, we are. So what does he have to explain? If we're so close, how come we're so stupid? <laughs> well, he's going to call it forgetful, which is becoming consequences of a lot nicer. one lends you and the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So close to the intelligence, the soul, that it's almost one with it. Oh, yeah? Hey, what located the intelligence to be in that spot so close to the soul? How come? Can we ask that? That means, if you can say this, how do you account for that position? How, in other words, put it in our language, the conditions for this being such as he describes, using these terms, become his philosophy. What established the intelligence in this way? Where are we going to go? The cause of this is the higher. Therefore, it's easy to go, isn't it? 
<clears throat> but the source did. The partless that is prior to plurality. That is the cause both of being and multiplicity. That is the maker of number. I, I bet you could add other things to it. Could you not? Come on. You could add other things to it, could you not? Let's do it. Right? The source did. It's the cause of both being and multiplicity. That is the maker of number and... Movement, rest. So you can add to it, can you? That's right. And hey, now so what's he going to pick on? Well, he wants to talk about the one, doesn't he? Right? That's what he's talking about? So therefore, out of all of those, is it likely that one of these is most akin to the idea of one? Number. So he pulls out number, doesn't it? Well, right, I'll talk about it. So he chooses to talk about number. Hey, number's not the first. One is prior to two. And two comes after one. Two, indeterminate in itself, is made determinate by one. He moves then to plurality or quantity. When plurality becomes determinate, with the determinacy rather like that of substances, it becomes number. Oh, maybe I can use that language. Maybe I can use that language and talk about soul. If there's so much akin... What I say about one ought to be what the heck might be some more. Therefore, that's where he's going, isn't it? Hey, the soul is number two because the primals are not quantitative masses. Masses, the gross in nature, secondary. For all that sense perception thinks them essences, right? Nobility of seeds and plants. Consists not in perceptible moisture, but in number and seminal reason. Both imperceptible. Number and plurality, that's it. They are in the intelligible realm, right? They are in the intelligible realm. Reasons and intelligence. But in itself, plurality is indeterminate. Number, however, that comes from it, from the one is form, quite as all things assume form in it. Intelligence is formed differently by the one than it is formed of itself. That is, light, sight made actual for intellection is the seen as seen, the two are one. Now look here, you can take that out and you can do one by making another contrast over here. He picked number. Pick out something and do it yourself. That is to say, the distinctions he makes, whatever you pick, say you picked uh, difference. Difference, however, comes from it. Boy, you cannot have difference unless you have one. Right? You must have a difference. You must see a difference between two things, and each of them are one. So they both require one, or you couldn't have difference. And difference, therefore, has a curiosity to about it. It has a kind of status, a form. The one is form, quite as if all things assumed form from it. But you agree, no matter what things you're picking, each one of these is one. Each of things is one, and no matter what your experience is one. So let me suggest, look here, see when you read him, then substitute. Don't just read. Go back, substitute other things, and see if you can talk about it using the same, making the same distinctions on these things. Pick another thing, make the same distinctions with it. 
Then you're in it, see? Then you're in it. What does he mean when he says number and plurality that are in the intelligible realm are reasons and intelligence? The third, fourth paragraph there on page 96. <coughs> Yeah, read it. Number and plurality that are in the intelligible realm are reasons and intelligence. Yeah. Um, so just put your finger on it. Right, right oh, okay, okay. So, um, would you pick out, uh, out of these nine, would you pick two? Um, Just from one to nine, give me a number. Um, five. Five, give me another number. Seven. Which one? Seven. Five and seven, okay. Okay, read the sentence, put five and seven in it. Uh, let's see, rest and, rest. A number that are in the intelligible realm are reason and intelligence. Can't read louder. See, we're we're playing together. I'm saying you don't need you don't need number and plurality. Pick two any and two have any of these. Now, watch the word in, in that sentence. Would you do it? Go ahead, read it again. Um, number and rest that are in, in the intelligible realm. Are Where are they? In the intelligible realm. That's in this state. That's in this experience. Okay. Oh, did we derive each of these from that experience? Yes, that's what we did. Well, each of these are principles, is that not true? Right. Are not principles reasons? Okay, got it. You'd say what? I'd say yes. Oh, oh, and if they're reasons, by the way, intelligence? What makes... These are both principles, okay. as well as, if we're using the word intelligence the way he is, they're also in that experience, aren't they? Okay, sure. So when you have a problem with this guy, substitute other terms that he's building and see if you can see it in those and switch around. Hey, you know what this trouble with this the whole thing is that a bunch of questions remain and that's really makes this work trivial unless we get into it. Wouldn't you agree? <coughs> yeah, yeah. These are his questions. How does the intelligence see? <coughs> hey, what does it see? How does it, how does it exist 
and issue from the one in order to see. Now, you just have to stay on that. Right? And go back to this. Remember, he's talking about two things. He's talking about not to see. When this person is having the experience, he ain't. All there is, is that experience. How is it that that experience has the power of sight? How does it see? How, do I, how does the intelligence see? I mean, it is seeing, isn't it? Now look here, see, it is seeing. See, intellecting. It's seeing. Huh, how does the intelligence see? Uh, what does it see? <coughs> what does it see? Here, would you say that's how does it exist? How does it exist? And uh, how does it come from the one in order to see? Well, this person, this person cannot guess the answer to these questions. Because his experience is only of this. He's lost his reason. Pardon? He's lost his reason. He's what? He, that person in that experience had lost their reason. They no longer can operate in the realm of reason if they are totally, you know, well, in no. ecstasy. No. That's true. Push it one more step, though. So that's true. But the question is how does it exist and issue from the one? If he only has this experience, it comes from the one of which he doesn't have the experience. He doesn't have that, he doesn't, hasn't had that encounter. But that's this person, person has. Right. This person has that. And with now, by the way, that experience, Pardon me, go ahead. Without the experience of the one, the the person, you know, experiencing the intelligible has no idea what is happening. That's, no, no, he knows what is happening. He doesn't know from what it emerged. Correct. He doesn't know its source. He doesn't know from what it derived. So therefore, this person, by the way, can't help either because he hasn't had this experience. So what do we need? A do that has both. And that's that great line in uh, page 96 in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, right? In the Evans Vance translation, right? That's what they call the Dharmakaya. I have a question. If, as to see and to understand, no, no. I say how many... No, no, seeing is not understanding. Or, Let's go ahead, keep going. Or say how many curves then? How many what? I'm seeing it as a curve, experiencing right now, you have curves. How many of those curves would it take before it becomes like two parallels that intersect? I'm not following your image, you see. If it keeps occurring, it's never different. He may have it, he may penetrate it more fully, but it not, doesn't become different. But so could becomes, you state it again without that? Try it again. Well, if you're seeing it non-visually in this world, say as a curve, we're explaining it, and then it becomes more realistic in this life, it becomes like a plus sign. Well, it becomes like a... A plus sign because you're using your, your narrow... Um, Oh, you want to understand it in terms where, where of Where does it actually cross? How does it finally meet? Yeah, if okay. it keeps okay. curving? No. 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 So I drop it. This <laughs> Don't try to understand it in any other terms than these. Okay. Otherwise, you'll only understand it in those terms and you'll miss what he's doing. Oh, okay. And it's easier. All you have to do is stay puzzled. <laughs> 
in, in saying, um, you, you're saying that in that state, the brilliant light of being, you're not going to get to the one, but yet there's another person. I didn't say you're not going to get uh, to the one. Try okay. They don't, uh, I thought you said that they wouldn't be able to answer these questions because of that state. I thought that's what you said. That is part of what I said, quite true. Okay, then, but that's not the same as this person over here who has, it's not an experience of the one, I mean, it's not experienced. What's the difference, well, number one, what's the, what's That's another this question, good. Right. Drop the first one and now the second one. Right, Go about ahead. two or three. Um, well, I don't mind, just as long as I stay with the one you want to deal with. Well, you jumped to, you, you had this saying that that person wouldn't be able to answer, but this one over here wouldn't either. That's true. I, that's the third point. Go ahead. So, just that's all right. clarify that first. Why wouldn't either one be able to understand what? that one? Understand what? that? I'll, right. I'll try to say the same thing I said before. Okay. And that way, I won't have to worry about saying that's anything fine. more. That's fine. Maybe it's less work for, for mother. Okay. This guy has only the experience of the most brilliant light of being. Okay. Got it. Therefore, he doesn't know from which he came, does he? Because that would go beyond the experience, wouldn't it? Right. Thank you. This guy only has this state. He never experienced this. Therefore, he couldn't comment on the source of this if he never <coughs> experienced it either, could he? <coughs> Thank you. Well, wait. I guess I'm mm. confused. Oh, yeah. So you can get directly to the one without going through. That's always the case, that you can go directly to one. I don't know. I always okay. thought you had to go through that. But I, it's my thinking. I don't mind your thinking, as you call it. Uh, this is nothing new okay. to you. Okay. Would you not agree this is Buddhism? This is the spiritual okay. not, of emptiness. All right. And they're going to reject any anything other than this, are okay. they not? Okay. Are you not familiar with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, Got good, it. good. Got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference? I recalled... Something I... Knew. Already knew. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Good, 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 good. That saved me a lot of work. Right. And that's always good for mother. <laughs> yeah, good. Right? Isn't it? Principle? Very good. Yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> So you got it. Well, no. you're gonna make up another one. Am Try I, it. Am I making it up? Sir? Please do not do not <laughs> issue with the word. Okay, then we push on. No, that's not just right. Thank you. Okay, I'm listening. Okay, got the questions. <coughs> How does the intelligence say? What does it say? Hey, how does it exist, and uh, from what did it issue, in order to see? Good questions. Therefore, would you not agree we're having fun? We can say, it looks like he's going to argue that there should be a another person who can talk about both. That's Plotinus. This guy would be the Bhagavad Gita. He experiences the 11th chapter of the great experience of Arjuna with the eye of yoga that Krishna gives him, and he has that light experience, light seeing, having a vision such as there are 10,000 suns blazing away at once simultaneously in the heavens, such a brilliant light of being. He doesn't go, Krishna doesn't bring him this. Okay. Therefore, would you agree we have nothing else to do but work? <laughs> well, before you work, I know this is an odd question, but I wanted to understand more clearly than that reference to the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I can maybe ask it later. No, no I'm not going to go into okay. the Tibetan Book of the Dead. You have an interesting question. Look it up yourself first, page 96, no, 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 97. No, no, no. The book. My question 
Well, it's not the right time. I can ask it later. Now, in this paragraph, therefore, would you agree? I wasn't going to the Tibetan Book of the Dead, but something else you've said. We're going to skip a couple of quick sentences because we want to go to the issue. Why did the one not remain by itself? Why did it emanate the multiplicity we find characterizing being and that we strive to trace back to the one? Hey, where did it do? Hey, look at that. Why didn't the one just stay the one and said, hey? Good question. Great question. Well, wouldn't that be inherent? In approaching in the this problem, let us first invoke the divinity. Let us do so not with words, but with the lifting of our souls to it and thus to pray alone to the alone. Mm. There it is now. To see the one that remains in itself as if in an inner sanctuary, undisturbed, remote from all things, we must first consider the images in the outer precincts. Or rather, the first one to appear. This seems to be its message. And see, this is a look at the way he's going to explore this. He's offering it up as an act of meditation, as a prayer. See? This kind of reflection, what's the nature of it? He says that it can to, to, in the Greek world, the Greek philosophy world, prayer is being able to state what you know to be true about the divinity. It's not beseeching for gifts and things. Mm -hmm. It's making statements about what it is you've encountered. Mm -hmm. Because that's training the mind either for the vision or recalling the vision or purifying the vision. That's prayer. Mm -hmm. That's contemplation. Mm -hmm. This seems to be its message. Mm -hmm. All that is moved must have a goal towards which it is moved, but the one has no goal towards which it's moved. Yeah. We must then not assume it to be moved. When things proceed from it, it must not cease being turned towards itself. We have to remove from our minds any idea that this is a process like generation in time because here we're treating of eternal realities. You know what? I'm going to talk just metaphorically. But he's only going to use metaphors. He's treating it metaphors, which is you should never take the statement as literally true, for if it's true, it's false. Right? Metaphor. Right. A shepherd is a king of his flock. Metaphor. He's obviously not a king of his flock, unless the sheep come around and make him a, a create a state for him. And bring him chocolate. Yeah, bring him, bring him coffee. And, coffee and chocolate. Yeah. The crown. So we speak metaphorically in terms of generation to indicate the causal relations of things eternal and their systematic order. What do we do? We're going to use metaphors to, to indicate the causal relations of things eternal. Hey, and their order. Ah, you see all these terms? He's got to put them in a hierarchy. He's got to put them in a hierarchy. Order, see, systematic order. They have to go together. He has to now tell us how to relate these terms together. That's the next step. What is begotten by the one must be said to be gotten, to be begotten, without any emotion on the part of the one. If the one removed, <laughs> begotten because of this movement, would have to be ranked third since the movement would be second. 
Uh, therefore, you know what? The one produces a second hypothesis without a, without a scent or decree or a movement. How would you conceive this kind of generation and its relation to its immovable cause? I'll tell you what. Now comes the great metaphors. Here they come. We are to conceive it as a radiation that proceeds from the One, <coughs> leaves its self-sameness undisturbed, much in the way the brilliance that encircles and is ceaselessly generated by the Sun does not affect its self-same and unchanging existence. Hey, see what he's doing? He said, I got, him. I got a great metaphor. He's giving up the overflow. This is light six. intelligence. It has some status. It has some kind of status being. It's dynamic. Its source, however, you see, that's the one. So, the one is like the flame or perfume and its essence. It is such that it has some influence. That influence is the first level of creation, intelligence. See the way he's doing it? <coughs> Indeed, everything as existing necessarily, everything necessarily produces its own substance, some further existence dependent on its power and image of its existence. Hey, same thing with fire and heat, snow, cold, perfumes. What becomes perfect becomes productive. The eternally perfect is eternally productive. What it produces is eternal too, although it is its inferior. So he adds to this image, begetting, goes back to begetting, adds to it perfection. If it's perfect, it's not sterile. If it's not sterile, it's capable of producing. Capable of producing, it produces. That's perfection. Assign perfection to the one, then it follows that it must be productive. If it's productive, it produces. If it produces, it's got a life. If it's got a life, it has some being. Right. If it's got some being, it's got some intelligence. What then are we to, to, to say of that which supremely perfect, that, that which is supremely perfect, it produces only the very greatest of the things that are less than it. What's most perfect? Second hypothesis, intelligence. Yeah, what is the intelligence too? It contemplates the one, needs nothing but the one. The one, however, has no need of the intelligence. Right, the flame has no need of light. Then he drops down to the idea of the soul. Same logic, same development. The soul is word and deed of the intelligence, just as the intelligence is the word and deed of the one. Analogy. But in the soul, the word is obscure. For the soul is only an image of the intelligence. Therefore, a soul turns itself to the intelligence just as to be intelligence must contemplate the one. Intelligence contemplates the one while being separated from it because there is no other existence between the two of them, just as there is none between intelligence and the soul. Begotten always long, now, right? Now he goes for the generation model, right? Mother and child, family. Begotten always longs for its begetter, loves it, 
especially is this so when the begetter and begotten are solitaries. But when the begetter is the highest good, the begotten must be so close to it that it's only separated by otherness. Hey, that means if we could pace it spatially, they're all pretty close together. If so, then, he's got to help us see how one, two, get them both. And in my translation, the last sentence has been added. It's not in yours. And therefore, at this point, it is best to quit and have a cup of coffee. <laughs> Pierre, Pierre, before you quit, you know, you how do you does he answer? Does he answer? How does the intelligence see, and what does it see? Oh, you asked. How, how does it? See? I don't see that he answered the first two questions. So maybe I missed something. Wow. He's, he's explaining how it's metaphorical. <coughs> Well, could you answer that? No, I can't. Why not? Because I don't see that he's he's explaining how it is metaphorically. It it, uh, it issues from the one, but it doesn't say how it sees or what it sees. I don't, I don't see anything. <coughs> Well, number 12 talks about the perception of the intelligence. So I don't know if you might answer Okay, come on, how about it? It's we worked perfect. on this for Come on. It's perfect. We're back on that opening section on section six. How does the intelligence see? Take what we've got. How would you answer it? Well, he talks the, the second sentence. He says to see the what? one. Yep. To see How would you answer? Go ahead. Well, to see the one, he's he's talking about what you must do, and that remains that we must first consider the images in the outer precincts, or rather, the first one to appear. This seems to be its message. So that. Step one, and that is that all that is moved must have a goal, and well, that's step one. I have to read the rest. So, what, what did you just do? I don't know what okay. he said. So, someone else. Say. <laughs> Forget the how. Mm -hmm. Does the intelligence see? Does it? Okay, change the how. When? Change it again. Under what condition? What does that do to the question? Come on. First question. Would you agree? Answer this. Does the intelligence see? Has he made a case for that? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Change the how to when. Okay, I have to go figure. I have to go back and figure it out. No, you can't. Just stay with what we already know. When it intellects the intelligibles, when it looks at itself? Right there. When it sees right. itself. Right here. When does the intelligence see? When it sees its source. When it reverts upon itself. And contemplates its, its source. source. Oh, how does it do it? By reverting back. Finish it. Contemplating or... It, 
See, I'm confused because he also says it does it does it through light. So it's how is that confusing? Light. Go ahead. Well, because that's a pretty wild idea that you're that something can reflect back on its source and do that through some kind of emanation or through light. Those are two separate things. Okay. What about it? Well, then that's why. I, if you refer, you got two issues, don't you? Well, I thought they went Reflecting together. Back that's on why. It. Um, go ahead. I thought they went together. That's okay, why I was together. having trouble. If you do, you have the answer. Go ahead. Well, if if you if something is contemplating itself successfully, such that it can contemplate its source, and the motion that it goes through is through light. It's a it's an emanation. It's so it's creating light. something. It's not through. Okay. It's not through it's a not field through. of light. It encounters light at this moment. See? And releases light, I would imagine. At this Pardon me? And releases, light would be released from that process, okay. right? Okay, you want to use that word? That's it's good. It emanates. Encounters, releases. Okay. <clears throat> see, whatever term you come up to answer a question, then you go back and see whether it matches as best you can see what the author's terms are. So see whether you have a way of adding to it, which you can do, or whether that purifies the term, or whether you should go and use the original author's term rather than your own. And that's why my translation has that very important <laughs> ending. <laughs> no one to quit. <laughs> So we know where we're going. Into the light. Oh. Right. One, two, three. Right. Jumping. One intelligent soul, soul intelligence, intelligence, and one back and forth. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. So what did you get it? Um, coffee. There are no straws. Yeah, coffee. <laughs> <laughs>